Hello everyone! So today I'm going to be doing an updated handbag collection including my review and wear and tear update especially because I feel like that's so often requested. You guys know that I've spent a lot of money and a lot of time um, investing in these handbags and I always get a little bit annoyed when people say invest but you know what I mean. I'm essentially a collector of designer handbags by now and they are my favorite thing to spend money on pretty much in life. I feel like at some point I'm going to get questions in the comment section about what I'm wearing, what's on my face, especially what's on my lips, so I will leave all that information for you in the information bar down below and I have made videos about pretty much all of the handbags I'm going to talk about today so I'll make sure to include them down below so that if you want more information about any particular handbag you can go to that video. I made a haul video about this handbag quite recently and I get a lot of questions about how it has held up because it is one of those kind of newer trendier ones and I have to say this is one of my favorite handbags of all time. I haven't talked about it that much because I kind of was mostly saving it for the fall but I actually surprised myself with how much I wore it during the summer and you can see it has some softening on the sides and a little bit of softening at the corner. The lambskin is meant to look a little bit more wrinkled and aged on this, but it has absolutely no visible scratches, only very faint scuffing on the hardware right here. And I just love how practical this bag is because it's really amazing how much you can fit. So I'm actually currently using it right now so it has stuff in it. But I really like the way that it's divided up. I like the pocket in the middle. Um, and I really like that it has a pocket at the back that is big enough to fit anything you'd want to reach for, mainly any size of phone. And I really like the way it has two handles. So often I'll carry it with this little one in the crook of my arm and it almost has a slightly androgynous kind of mini briefcase look to it then that I really enjoy. I'm a sucker for anything that is chevron so the design of this handbag to me is extremely pleasing. I like that it's a little bit more edgy than a lot of my other handbags as well and then I really like the long strap because I find that it's very comfortable with the leather in the middle and overall I just feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck for this handbag. Obviously it's very pricey but compared to other designers I feel feel like YSL hasn't gotten too too crazy and I just really love their designs in particular um, this handbag because the leather on it is so soft and a lot of their other designs are actually ingrained caviar style leather um, so I really like that this one is a little bit different it now comes in a bunch of other colors including a really beautiful navy if I can find one on a department store website I will link it down below they kind of come in and out and it also does come in a smaller size as well. Second most recent is my little Gucci Soho in the bright cherry red. I love the color of this handbag and I really like the design as well for the most part. So I like how light it is because it's actually fully lined in linen so it's not anywhere near as heavy as other handbags um, from designer brands. Gucci really tends to keep their bags very very light. They are having a major fashion moment right now and yet the prices still have not kind of climbed up too too much especially on the Soho line. It's one of those as well that fits a surprising amount because of the rectangular shape. You can easily fit a camera, a big wallet, some makeup, your cell phone, pretty much everything that you could possibly want and it's a, especially I think a great bag for traveling when you kind of want your hands free and you want to carry a fair amount but not like a work amount on you. It's just perfect. I've used this handbag when I go to Hawaii a lot. I think it's especially cute for the spring and summer. The only thing I want to point out in terms of wear and tear is that the strap is quite stiff and has not softened on me yet. And something that is a pet peeve of mine about this handbag is the way that if you wear it on a shorter length like I do, I'm 5'4", so I kind of need to do that, then this tends to stick out just like I'm showing you and I find that really annoying. It's just one of those things that I can't seem to get over so what I tend to do is I tuck in the strap like this and then it sticks out a little bit less but it still sticks out and every time I wear it it kind of makes me want to cut it 
not myself, but kind of take it to a leather care specialist who will cut it for me. Of course, if you do that, it's going to decrease the resale value of your bag by a lot. So I've kind of been hesitating about that and I wanted to point it out because I feel like it's something you might not think about when you're in the store. So next up, and I feel like you guys have heard me really wax lyrical about this handbag, it is unfortunately no longer available directly from Louis Vuitton, so if you like this bag you would have to purchase um, one from a luxury resale place, but I really adore this handbag. It's one of my best investments ever because cost per wear, it has really cost me very little because I wear this handbag all the time almost for the whole summer I carry this bag you can see the patina on it is substantial now but that's actually the only way I like um, canvas monogram Louis Vuitton bags I really dislike the original light color of them um, and I see those all the time around Vancouver I feel like a lot of people get the bags and then resell them um, once it starts to patina but I adore adore this cognac color that they turn and the canvas on it is still perfection it has minimal scratches here on the plate which I remember being originally very worried about when I purchased the handbag a few months after I purchased it it did have an issue with one of the screws coming out here but they fixed it and installed a brand new piece for me in the store in Vancouver Vancouver, they have really great service, very friendly and um, helpful. And the inside of the bag is a little bit dirty now, but nothing crazy. Overall, the shape of it has held up really, really well. I tend to stuff my bags with either tissue paper or old kitchen towels that are clean but kind of stained um, and the stains won't come out. Um, I'll kind of keep those and then stuff my handbags with them so that they keep their shape a little bit better but um, overall I'm just so so happy with this bag I still adore it it's definitely probably one of my top three bags if you put a gun to my head and make me choose Celine luggage tote I did sell my phantom I used to have a phantom in navy blue that I did, did a video about and I will link it down below for you in case you're curious um, but I just found that the phantom was too big for my frame it really did look like a piece of luggage um, not in a good way and and was overly heavy once I put too much stuff in it so I did resell that bag but this handbag I don't think I ever will resell because it's one of those bags that I reach for all the time when I travel and so for the wear and tear part of the video I really want to be honest that this handbag is kind of trashed and I'm filming this in HD so make sure you increase the quality um, in the selection for settings um, so you can see all of the details of the bags but um, in terms of corner wear it's still very good but you can see it's completely lost its shape even if I stuff it completely it still kind of flops now um, which is part of what you buy when you buy Celine unfortunately that is what you get I don't like that some of the glazing has started to wear off here so you can see it's kind of peeling I have to be honest though and say that I haven't babied this bag I think once you take a bag on an airplane you're kind of you have to sign off on being okay with it getting really worn because there's just something gross that happens to them um, which is why I kind of sacrifice this one since I bought it pre-loved um, it was already quite worn and softened once I purchased it. The in inside of the bag is still in pretty good condition, but I can see that the kind of suede material has started to wear down in some parts. The stitching is still in really good condition, however, as is um, the Celine um, name brand here. The handles are still really nice. They're not overly dirty or worn at all. Um, but I feel like for the price, like if you were to buy one of these new, you you would maybe want it to kind of wear down a little bit more gently than it has. I feel like if I were to resell this bag, which like I said, I don't think I ever will because I really enjoy traveling with it and how much it fits and that it still looks to me like quite chic and different and I do like the robot face aspect of it. But if I were to resell it, I don't feel like I would get a lot of money for it since it is kind of like worn and grotty looking now. But I love it anyway and I have to say, if you want a handbag that is not black, but will work for almost any season and will look good with any outfit. This sort of color, which is called Souris um, from Celine, but most other 
um, brands, including Louis Vuitton and Gucci, have their take on a kind of taupey grayish is fabulous. It really is such a chic color, and I absolutely adore the color of it. It's one of the things that makes me reach for this bag very, very often. Next up, I do own two Mulberry bags, so I'm going to talk about them together because the design is quite similar. So the smaller one is the Mulberry Lily. And you can see that it's kind of their take on the whole little flat handbag, medium size kind of thing. Mulberry bags definitely have that kind of classic English elegance that I really like. I did go to university over there. Um, so this one was a gift, and this one I purchased from their outlet, um, which is near Bath. And I really enjoyed that experience. I still really love the look of these bags. If I were to purchase them again, I would do it again. However, to give you honest advice in terms terms of wear and tear um, about two years down the line for this one and a year and a half for this one or so. I have to say they are not the most durable bags. If you sign up for a mulberry bag, you have to know that the hardware will scuff and scratch on you almost right away. There's something about their hardware that is different than any other designer handbag. It's very soft, um, so you have to be okay with that because even if you babied your bags more than I do mine, you would still get scratches on the hardware. It's just absolutely inevitable because it scratches itself um, with the straps or with with any pretty much anything including like jewelry you have on um, the leather itself is beautiful it's very soft and all of their handbags pretty much um, that I have ever seen at least from the Bayswater collection are unlined so you can see how it's just a really soft suede as a result there's not a lot of structure to the bag but that's part of the design so softening of the leather is something that again you have to enjoy to sign up for one of these bags um, the glazing stitching and corner wear on them is quite good um, but again I do notice that especially the Lily I don't know if it's a color issue I believe it might be because this one actually has a semi metallic finish so it helps it to look a little bit newer but the Lily has quite substantial scuffing and I haven't even used this bag that much I've kind of used it quite a lot during the summer but I definitely reach for my Louis Vuitton over this bag I love the look of it however because I think it has a nice kind of dressed up casual elegance to it it does fit a lot it looks really nice with a dress I like the way you can adjust the strap so it can be worn crossbody or across the shoulder it's definitely like a nice ladylike bag and for the classic Bayswater um, which I also really enjoy it's just the perfect work bag size. It's a little bit Birkin inspired but definitely much more relaxed I would say and it's just one of those designs that has now become a bit of a classic I think because it's pretty much their original design um, and I really like how easy it is to get in and out of the bag especially something that I tend to do when I carry this bag on a busy day is I'll tuck in the flap and then I can just kind of throw things in and it fits um, documents very comfortably. It's not too heavy um, in terms of a designer bag. It's definitely heavier than my Louis, um, but other than that, for having some hardware on it, um, it's not too heavy at all. And I do, again, really, really enjoy any bag that has a kind of slightly original color that's not black. So we are now into the Chanel portion of this video. And again, I want to mention that I did make a whole video about my Chanel handbags. So I mainly want to focus on the wear and tear of them. Pretty much the most expensive handbag I've ever purchased is this beautiful boy bag. Now my color choice was non-traditional. I really adore the navy and gold. I'm a big navy fan. I think it's really soft against the skin. Really chic and classic, but definitely different. Um, so I really, really enjoy the options that I picked for this bag. And I stick by my guns that I mentioned in my Chanel full review video that I really truly believe that lambskin is is not something to be scared of. I have not had the experience with any of my bags that it scuffs up any more than any other type of leather. I really like the way that it softens over time as opposed to caviar leather and there is no visible scratches at all on the outside of this handbag. I've gotten some questions about the corners. I do know that they are notorious on the boy bag for getting worn more quickly. I would say just to be careful with where you put down the handbag. This is definitely a handbag that I baby. 
more than my others, but having worn it for a year and a half now, I don't notice that there's any wear at all. The only thing I would mention about this bag is that the inside of it, for some reason, really gets quite destroyed. So there's quite a lot of like small scuffs on the inside of the bag as a result of the hardware rubbing when you close it. Um, and then the inside of the bag is just actually lined in fabric, which is not a great idea in terms of maintaining the structure of the bag, but it helps to keep it lighter than any other Chanel handbag, so that's something I do appreciate when I wear it. I really like the strap on it. You often see me in my Outfit of the Day videos kind of switching around the strap from long to short because I think it really alters the vibe of the handbag. I think it adds a much needed, slightly young and edgy element to my otherwise very classic wardrobe. My second most worn handbag of all time is certainly this one. So after my Louis Vuitton, my vintage Chanel oversized hardware flat bag, this is a single flap from the 90s, is so often worn by me. I feel like it's almost like a signature of mine with the oversized, very warm gold, actual real gold plated hardware which is definitely getting worn now unfortunately because it's electroplated with gold that does wear down over time. It's something that you have to accept when you buy one of these. Also, given that they no longer sell them, there's often going to be some kind of wear on it. The handbag is still in very good condition, but I can tell that it's starting to be towards the end of its life of being worn very often because the corners on this bag have really started to get worn down. So you can see there's actually some piping on the inside of the corner here that is starting to show through. So my plan is to start to retire this bag a little bit more and or to maybe get it fixed and send it to a Chanel spa. However, unfortunately, something you should know about buying a Chanel handbag is that if you buy it um, not directly from a store, so if it's not a new bag, either through resale or because it's vintage, they will not fix the handbag for you in any way. Even if you pay them, they just won't take it anymore. So you have to find another expert that you trust with your bag, which is quite difficult. If you guys know of a place that I could send it, please let let me know. My least worn handbag is definitely my GST. I definitely saved this bag for best. This is my girl boss handbag that makes me feel instantly fabulous and businesslike. It is, however, quite a chunky bag, so it gets quite heavy and imposing to carry all the time. Um, I really otherwise love the design of it. It's quite practical. The only thing I would say is that it is kind of a little bit tiring to carry all the time just because it feels so chunky somehow. I can't complain about it looking worn in any way. It pretty much looks entirely brand new other than I think a slight powder stain somewhere on the inside that would probably come out if I tried. Um, but that said, I haven't worn it probably more than 30 times, 20 to 30 times in its lifetime. Two more handbags to go, both Chanel's. So I have my little wallet on chain here. Definitely a smart investment on my part because the price went up like crazy after I bought this a couple of years ago. I wear this handbag for pretty much any special occasion, anytime I go out in the evening, especially a lot during the holidays or for travel as well. I find it particularly convenient. There are so many different ways that you can wear this bag um, that I just find it such a smart little bag and I think everyone should have a wallet on chain from some brand and now pretty much every like mid-level brand and high-end brand has a version of this but I wanted the Chanel one I did get it in caviar and for this one I have to say it still looks perfect there is no wear on this handbag whatsoever it really has done me um, very very well and then last but not least for my collection is one of my favorite bags. I don't wear this bag super often because it is on the petite side. I usually have to narrow down what I'm carrying to wear it. But this handbag to me is magic. If I were a handbag, if I had to be reincarnated as a handbag, this would be it. I just think it's so beautiful. I love the chevron. I love the color. It's a teal emerald green that looks different in different lights. So today in the kind of cloudy lighting, um, it's looking quite green but sometimes in the sun it looks more teal. It really is still in fantastic condition. I pull this bag out for almost every special occasion that I can. I find that the color really goes with more than you would think. There's the slightest little hint of corner wear on this. 
um, but otherwise the stitching is still perfect there are no visible scratches so this handbag is really one of the reasons why I say that I'm not afraid of lambskin at all or spending um, designer handbag money on a lambskin bag if there are ever any little marks or stains I find that they just rub out the quality on it is excellent I did buy it um, from a resale website but it was in as new um, condition pretty much so it is from 2008 however which means that it's not the newest of bags it's definitely got um, some age under its belt but despite that there's no cracking or visible aging of the leather at all some of these handbags are now four to five years old now pretty much so it has been a while that I've owned them and I still love all of them not one of them is so worn that it's gotten unwearable which makes me feel a little bit better about how much money I spent on them. To see my next installment on style, then make sure that you like and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!